McKinney-Vento Liaisons, supporting students, schools, and communities. The McKinney-Vento Act is a federal law that requires every school district to designate a homeless liaison who ensures that children and youth experiencing homelessness can enroll and succeed in school. While almost all liaisons have several other jobs to do, their creativity and commitment allow many of them to have a big impact on their communities, their schools, and their students. In the fall of 2011, students from around the country who were experiencing homelessness interviewed their McKinney-Vento liaisons. We filmed those interviews and compiled them in this video. What follows are liaison stories, their challenges, successes, and inspirations as told to their students. Can you describe like a typical day or week <laughs> at your job? Ah, there's really not a typical day. Every day is different, um, but there's never a boring day. A lot of what we do as homeless liaisons are um, behind the scenes things a lot of times. Um, connecting families and kids to, to resources. I talked to a lot of agencies trying to get resources for families. Like this morning was trying to find uh, different resources for families to pay the light bill. And our portable is packed with boxes of clothes and school supplies and, and our two desks. And um, our phone rings pretty much nonstop all day long. We get phone calls from schools who have questions about um, needs that students have or services that students have. And then we get a lot of calls from families um, that have questions about either enrolling a child in school or getting transportation to school. A typical day for me is I'm in and out of my car, riding up and down in New Haven, uh, going for meetings, going to different schools, talking to school personnel, meeting staff, um, just making sure I get the word out about McKinney Bento. I meet with somebody from social services, I meet with people from community mental health, I work with our food services department, I run around, I uh, collaborate with special ed, I go out to schools, I meet with principals and counselors, and I get phone calls from parents, and then I answer emails. So even though it's only one job, it's like two or three jobs into one, because there's so many different things that, that, that you get involved with okay. when you're in this job. Why do you think this job is important? Um, kids have a lot on their plate, as you guys know, and in your particular situations, um, if you didn't have someone that you could go to and kind of let you know what's available to you, your job as, as being a student would be a lot more difficult. Because there's a lot of students like you who really want to make a difference in the world, there's a lot of students who want to go to school and because people are unaware of the issues of homelessness, it creates barriers that prevents them from going to school. And so it's just, you have to have somebody. You have to have somebody there that's always, I tell people, you gotta get the cage and rattle it. A lot of individuals don't realize, number one, that we have homeless children in school. A lot of people just think, when they think of homeless, they think of adults standing on the street with signs. Um, and so they're not knowledgeable. And so this position is very important to educate individuals, uh, school staff. Uh, community staff. There's, you know, a, a big federal law, McKinney-Vento, that really um, spells out rights for homeless students. It spells out responsibilities that school districts have. Um, and I would be really concerned without our position or without the two of us working in our program that schools might forget a lot of that because they'd be more focused on um, test scores and, and kind of meeting the daily needs of students. And then I think there's so many families that wouldn't understand that, you know, if they've lost their housing, they could stay in the school that they were going to. So I think it's um, a lot of what we do is really educating school staff and families about that federal law. Providing transportation to the students provides them some consistency when the rest of their life is feeling like it's out of control. So the kids are able to stay with their same teachers, their same friends, the same routine, the same, you know, um, you know, just schedule for the week. And uh, for most of us, when we are involved in a crisis, just kind of keeping things as normal as possible is what's important. What are the greatest challenges you face in being as successful as you'd like to be as a liaison? Number one would be time. I just don't think there's ever enough time in the day. Last year we had 
you know, over 5,000 students that we served in our district, you know, uh, that didn't have stable housing. One year we had 101, one year oh. we had 294, one year we had 254, last year we had 355. Wow, yeah, so, so the numbers so, just gone up. Yeah, it, it goes up because times are hard in society. Years ago, when I first started, I might have two or three hundred students that I worked with in a school year, and so you know, I could go once a week to the different shelters, and I could really get to know kids and families and um, spend time with them. But now, because of the number of kids that we're serving, I am I'm generally a voice on the phone to most of the families. We have too many kids in San Antonio ISD uh, that are that don't have homes that I can't do personal care of every student because there's too many. Um, but I'll get them in, but I tell principals and, co and, and counselors and other social workers and everybody in the school, I said, I'll get them in, but you have to keep them in. Don't push them out. Another challenge is um, making sure that we don't forget children, making sure that my liaisons in the schools um, are aware and alert and in tune and know how to identify kids who are in homeless situations uh, and serve them. Uh, so making sure that the kids don't fall between the cracks. It's very difficult for me as the as the coordinator for the program to find the older kids because they're not with their mom and dads in the shelters. Yeah. They are with friends and relatives and whomever and so, you know, we lose them. Do you ever worry about running out of supplies for the people that you help? I do. And as a matter of fact, I, I have run out of book bags for my middle and high school population, so I, I do worry about that. And then my role as the liaison for the district is that I, I have to identify other resources. It was kind of scary, to be honest, because um, the situations are pretty intense. And uh, I've had, you know, families call, leave a message at like 9 o'clock at night on my phone and tell me that we're, we're out again. We got kicked out again and we're in the car tonight. Can you please call me, you know, in the morning? Um, those are really hard calls to take because I, I, you know, get here at 6.45 in the morning, I get this call and realize that there's a mom and, you know, a single mom and two daughters living in their car overnight. I think the toughest is just the lack of knowledge a lot of people have on uh, what's going on when it comes to homeless um, youth and people. I think there's a huge need that's going on for people, but there's not enough services and the resources are pretty thin when it comes to um, older, older kids, actually. I mean, for students like you, there's a lot of kids that run away from home. They have no place to go to. That frustrates me because I don't know where to send them. There's no place to send them to. What do you like best about being a liaison and what are some of the accomplishments you are very proud of? The best part's when I get to see kids. <laughs> the best thing that I that I could that I could do in this job is to help kids get into school. And I also have implemented um, after school academic programs and it, it's proven that it's helped those kids with their academic skills. So I'm very proud of that. That's what it's all about. Get you all in school <laughs> and help you succeed academically. Yeah, if a kid needs clothing, we've got it. If a kid needs shoes, we've got it. If a kid needs bus passes, we've got it. Um, and so I'm very proud of all that. But I really love to go to school meetings with families um, and see them speak up for themselves. And we want to recognize the challenges, but we want to empower the students to figure things out themselves. I feel very happy when I see um, a student feel empowered uh, to go to school and get good grades, even though they may not have a stable home, but they find stability in school. So I just like being able to help empower those who may feel powerless due to the fact they're facing homelessness. Another part I like is, is the managerial part, managing the program to make sure that we're following the federal law. We get donations and we get food supplies and you know go to Feeding America I told them next thing I knew we had nine school pantries and 400 backpacks of food so that kids had some food to take home on weekends. And at the end of the day it's about the students. You are definitely in a very vulnerable situation, okay? But what the two of you have done is you have taken that vulnerable situation and you have used that feeling, you have accepted that feeling, you accept, you know, what's going on in your life, um, and you've used that to create a motivation for yourself. 
And I think that's really cool that you do that. I know I got a future to look forward to, mm -hmm. and I know it's about to be hard, but I know I could do it. I, I got confidence in myself that I could do it, mm -hmm. and I know people around me say I could do it, and I, I believe them. Okay. I know my future is in school. I'm going to be a better person by coming to school, graduating, going to college, something that my parents didn't do. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I do, I'm going to have a better future, and I'm not going to be like what they did to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always gotten taught that if you don't go to school, you're, you're never going to be successful. And that's the way I think of it, too, because, like, I want to become somebody in this life. I want to become known, and people know me for who I am doing something good. School means absolutely everything to me. Everything about why I'm still like strong is school. Cause school is all that I have. I have no family. I have nothing besides school. So I feel as if school would get me to that. I get education. I'll go to college, graduate and meet somebody and start a family or do what I have to do. So school to me is everything. Absolutely everything. It showed me that I can be better than what I was, that I can be better than my parents and I can succeed in school. Like I have my high school diploma framed up there and I look at it every day and it's, it's an accomplishment I'm very proud of. Because I got close to many people in this school which I say they are my family now because I, I grew up without one. So I feel like I came back to a family that actually wants me here and actually helped me get in this school. To get involved in helping your local McKinney Vento homeless liaisons as they strive to support children and youth experiencing homelessness, contact your state McKinney Vento Homeless Education Office. Contact information is available at center.serve.org slash nche or contact your local school district central office. This video is a production of the National Association for the Education of Homeless Children and Youth at www.naehcy.org. We wish to thank Virgin Unite for their generous financial support, the student interviewers for their good questions and enthusiasm, and the liaison interviewees for their candor, creativity, and commitment. I really have to thank you guys a lot for um, helping me with that, changing my mind and giving me the spirit again of just knowing school is something. Okay. And that's what it's all about. And that's what you always remember. You can do anything yes. that you put your mind to, regardless of your circumstances. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like I remember um, Mr. Rammer brought you in and you were telling me about, you know, being in school and being on the basketball team and that that you guys had just gotten into your, you were supposed to be getting in your apartment. I, I really like seeing that. I like, you know, I, I grew up pretty poor and education changed the trajectory of my life.